A former president and board member of the Aerial Agricultural Association says his industry is adopting technology to reduce spray drift. Peter Travers runs an aerial spray operation on the New South Wales-Queensland border and has invested significantly in drift reducing technology. We've used a model called AgDrift to, uh, to measure uh, the amount of drift that the nozzle produces. Uh, this is all work that's been collaborated by the U US Department of Agriculture over a very long time and a lot of trial work has been put into this model. So once we know how much drift the nozzle creates, we've uh, designed angles and placement on the aeroplane and then measured it again with the model to um, work out the best place to put the nozzles and what angles and droplet sizes we need to create the least amount of drift. Travelling at 250 kilometres an hour across crops, agricultural aircraft can be doing 10 times the speed of a ground spray rig. By using a boom that can rotate, it's made it possible to vary spray droplet size in flight. We create a different droplet size by putting the angle of the nozzle into the slipstream that the aeroplane generates. So if the nozzle's pointing straight back, you're creating a large droplet, and if it's pointing down, the shatter causes a very fine droplet, which you might use for insecticides. Being able to assess the situation while in flight and change the droplet size to suit the conditions that you see on the ground is, is a huge benefit. And the use of high operating pressures helps reduce the amount of driftable fines, says Peter Travers. Because the aeroplane's travelling through the air about 250 kilometres an hour, if we can speed up the chemical and, and blast it out backwards, we can equalise the uh, speed of the chemical to the air and that reduces the amount of the fines that are produced. So a high pressure in the range of 40 psi to 50 psi is what we normally use. Whereas with a ground rig, um, it's travelling quite slowly in comparison, maybe 25 kilometres an hour, and this effect's not nearly as big. The drift reducing technology built into agricultural aircraft, such as this one, is not the only measure being adopted by operators like Peter Travers. We developed a quality assurance program to make sure that our pilots um, knew how to use the system and that they did use it. Uh, and we've set standards for swath widths, droplet sizes and water volumes for every different, uh, every different um, crop and situation that we do a spray job in. And we also educate our clients and the consultants involved as to how to use the aeroplane properly so that we can increase the efficacy for the client and reduce the effect on the community. Local and international chemical regulators attending the recent workshop on DRTs got up close with the technology Peter Travers has adopted. And it's his hope that the significant personal investment he's made to apply this technology will be acknowledged and rewarded by buffer zones that can take best practice into account.